the second half of the preseason for the Canucks game, four of six as they take on the Phoenix Coyotes, who they'll meet five times in the regular season. Starting goalies brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. Thomas Grice has found a new home in Phoenix after time in San Jose. Last year, backing up Auntie Niemi. This year, it figures to be Mike Smith. And Roberto Longo looking to bounce back from his only preseason appearance. Four goals against in 40 minutes work on 18 shots against Edmonton. And he'll be Vancouver's number one this year. There's Newell Brown, assistant coach for the Canucks for a few years. Found a new home in Phoenix in the offseason. And he'll be in charge of the power play down in the desert. Yannick Hansen lines up alongside the Sedins for this one. And they start this hockey game. And an early chance for Daniel Sedin tipping one on goal. And what a stop by Grice after Keith Yandel put the puck right onto the stick of Daniel Sedin. And you can see Keith Yandel came over and tapped his goaltender in the pads right away. Oh, what a pass that was. And Thomas Grice, very alert on this play. Expect it when you leave it. Look at Grice. He's ready. He's set. And when it's tipped by Daniel Sedin, Grice is there to make the save. Alex Burroughs had a goal in a game last season, six seconds in against Detroit, and that would have rivaled the Burroughs goal. On the resumption of play, the Coyotes work the puck down into the Canucks. Here. Here's a centering pass for Vermette. That's broken up, and the Canucks clear the puck to center. Hansen chops it forward and heads to the Canucks bench. Derek Jones back to the puck. Yandel throws it across. Here's Chris Brown, who's off to a wonderful start in the preseason. Burroughs runs into him. Burroughs and Higgins have come onto the ice. Henrik Sedin stays out. Ryan Kessel will take his spot once the Canuck captain gets to the players' bench. Chris Tanev working to hold the puck in the Phoenix zone. But the Coyotes get it across to Morris. He tried to throw it up the middle, blocked by Higgins. Now the puck's out to center and tipped into the Vancouver zone. Rob Klinkhammer chasing in on Alex Edler, who banks the puck around for Tanev out of his reach. Brown behind the net for Klinkhammer. Here's Kyle Chichura with a sharp angle shot. That went off a stick. Went over the glass in the corner to the right of Roberto Luongo. We saw John Tortorella behind the bench Saturday night in Edmonton after being up in the press box evaluating last week. He said it was very important for him to get the personality of the team from being behind the bench. You can sit upstairs and evaluate and see how the guys are playing, but to get the temperament of the players themselves, you have to be right there. And he said it was important for him to get down behind the bench again. Brad Richardson out for this defensive zone draw against Martin Hansel. Ron Rody with the drop of the puck. Andrew Alberts takes a hit in the corner as he tips the puck around for Mike Santorelli. Santorelli to center, here's the Cox with a two on one. Richardson in with Shinkarik and the pass for the rookie was tipped away and the Coyotes take control of the puck. Mike Santorelli, 25 for Vancouver, playing the wing in this hockey game after a strong showing in Edmonton. Alberts bumps Hansel, puck comes to the right point, David Runblad. He tries a wrist shot blocked by Richardson. Paul Reckman Larson with a shot, that hit the outside of the post on the stick side on Luongo. Looked like he picked it up late. Richardson hooks the puck to an open side, Yannick Weber's after it, he tips it down to the Phoenix blue line. David Schlemko back for the puck, he frees it up for Rundle. Two minutes in, no score. Canucks with the only shot, it came mere seconds in on a turnover from Yandel to Daniel Sedin. Gilbert Boulay onto the ice for Phoenix. Hoping a second stop with the Coyotes might be what he needs to resurrect his career. Jason Garrison chases back for a loose puck. Leaves for Kevin Bieksa. Around for Brendan Gauntz, can't clear past Brule. Lori Korpakoski battles for the puck behind the Vancouver goal. The exit gets it around for Bo Horvath. The 18-year-old turns and makes a accurate pass to Jason Garrison. Here's Sestito back to Garrison. Quick wrist shot. An easy blocker save for Grice. Gauntz from behind the net. Gauntz leaves for Sestito. Being watched by Miele. Sestito, strip of the puck. And it's brought to center by Andy Miele. He took down the exit, up in it, and it lays in front with a shot, and reaching in to tip it over the glass was Jason Garrison. Roberto Luongo didn't have much luck in his last start against the Edmonton Oilers. A couple of bounces and screen shots. Here's another one. Martin Hansel skates through the crease, and I think Roberto got a little piece of that before it hit the outside of the post. Miele. 
Got away with one there. The old push behind the kneecap of Kevin Bieksa brought him down. No tripping call. Here's Dave Moss trying to cut in front. Don't forget to add Sport Snap Murph to your follow list. I had lots of Twitter followers after the Edmonton game last week. <laughs> Join our fans. Very pleased with our broadcast. They love you. Where's they, Louie they, and Kevin Quinn? They just have a funny way of showing it sometimes. <laughs> Luongo covers that one up with Antoine Vermet in the neighborhood. Still no score. Three and a half minutes into the first. Coyotes had six guys that played every game last year. Antoine Vermette was one of them. And uh, Dave Tippett looks on. Keith Yandel was another one. Ekman Larson was another one. They had their key guys all stay healthy. And in the shortened season, it helped. But this year, more stability. What's their motto this year? Here, here to, to stay. stay. Yes, here to stay. The new ownership. Ryan Kessler with a pass just under the reach of Burroughs. He chases after the puck on Ekman Larson. Chipchura picks it up. Higgins closes the gap quickly. Uh, the puck out to center, wristed back in by Weber. Ekman Larson to Rundblad. Hard pass ahead. Brown tied to tip the puck through. Chipchura is onto it for Phoenix. He's got an open man in front. There's the pass. Ekman Larson cuts wide. Wrist shot. Stopped by Luongo a bit awkwardly, but he made the save. Chipchura. Bobbled the puck in the blue line, and the Coyotes have to regroup at center. Clinkham tips it in. He starts a Phoenix change as Longo comes out of the net. He leaves for Yannick Weber. He beats a couple of Coyotes and skates to center. Puck knocked off his stick, and here comes Hansel the other way, moving in on Andrew Alberts. Hansel with a wrist shot, and Longo look confident making that blocker sick. Long shot from the line. That was blocked by Alberts. He gloves the puck to Shin Carrot. He's able to tip it out to center. Again, the Coyotes play the puck in, and Alberts is back to pick it up. Gives it away. Oh, almost gave it away. Got ahead of myself there, but lurking in front was Max Domi and almost had a chance. Verbata steps around Richardson. Radin Verbata centers, intercepted by Bieksa, and he gets the puck ahead. Unable to move it out with Shin Carrot. Richardson tips it free, and he'll settle the puck in his own zone. Bobby! Bobby! Five minutes in, no score. And Shinkarek pressured by Zubair Brule. Puck comes free to be exit. Andrew Alberts would like to get off on a change, and he will as the Canucks tip the puck down to the Phoenix Blue Line. Shots two apiece. Although it feels like Phoenix has tested Luongo a little bit more. Castino back for a loose puck, plays it free to the far side, and BX is on to it for the Canucks. Throws it up the middle, Miele knocked it down, but here comes Bo Horvat. Horvat plays chip and charge around Yandel. Brule comes back to throw a check. Sestito fishing for the puck. It comes into the corner to Gantz, throws it in front. Horvat, quick shot, stopped by Grice. He went to his knees and blocked the puck. Morris is on to it for Phoenix. Sestito with a hard hit on him. Tanev centers, kicked out, rebound. Gantz is stopped by Grice. Brandon Gantz looking for his third of the preseason, but Grice got the better from there. Both teams changing as Tanev throws one forward. Both Edler and Gantz let it go, but icing is waved off. Here's Henrik Sedin for the Canucks. Behind the net to Daniel. Daniel to Henrik again. He's checked by Ekman Larson, who clears the puck past Bieksa and out to center. Six and a half minutes gone in the first, no score. Here comes Yannick Hansen with a burst at center. In on the right wing, a wrist shot, gloved by Grice, he'll hang on. And we'll step aside from this preseason contest. Canucks and the Coyotes, you're watching it live on Sportsnet Pacific. We talked about learning the systems. One of them is a hard four check. Here's the chip. Bo Horvat goes in, look at where all three forwards are. In behind the net, hard on the forecheck. That's what John Tortorella wants. Get in, control the puck, get a chance. Horvat has the original chance. And then Brendan Gantz gets one on a rebound. And Thomas Christ makes a good save. Sedin's and Hansen out for this offensive zone faceoff. Henrik Sedin onto the puck behind the net. Try to reverse for the centering pass, intercepting his Runeblatt. 
Covering for Kevin Bieksa is Daniel Sedin. Wrist shot deflected through by Henrik Sedin, stopped by Grice, and he covers with Hansen looking for a loose puck. With the Sedin brothers connect there on the redirect from the high slot. And that shallow net, we saw Henrik Sedin try that back pass to Yannick Hansen. And with the shallower nets, that's going to be more effective. Tip in, try. Thomas Grice has been very good here early. Only played six games as Antti Niemi was a Vezina candidate last year. Jason LaBarbera moved to Edmonton. Second preseason appearance for Grice, who stopped all 15 shots he faced in a partial game earlier. And he stopped all six so far in this one. Couple of collisions inside the Vancouver Blue Line. Now Klinkhammer shoots the puck in from the right side. Long out to cut it off. Andrew Alberts under pressure. Puck comes free to Chris Higgins. He finds Burroughs, tried to slide it through for Weber, who was jumping up. Now Higgins is onto the puck. Higgins pressuring the defense and stepping up to check him was Derek Morris. Kessler picks up the loose puck. Trying to get it through to Burroughs behind the net. That was picked off by Chip Chura. Kessler keeps after the puck, throws it in front. Out of the reach of Higgins. And Brown able to move the puck out to neutral ice. Alberts takes a hard hit to Makes the play to Higgins, who gets the puck into the Phoenix zone. Richardson on the forecheck. Center pass, a deep to the back end by Santorelli, and Grace winds up with the puck. Mike Santorelli off the bench right to the net and had a good chance in front. Derek Morris was there, but Santorelli had the chance, and he couldn't get it wide enough to get it by. Thomas Grace, there's a change. Mike Santorelli getting up into the play. Good forecheck. He's the second man. He's laid right down the middle. Goes to the back end. Derek Morris is there, and Thomas Christ makes the save. Richardson on the face off against Hansel. And they're going to wave Martin Hansel out. Radim Verbata moves in to take the draw. Richardson trying to get after the puck in the corner. Tanev holds it in. Richardson bodied along the boards. And Verbata slides the puck to center. Santorelli takes it away for Vancouver. Chris Tanev ahead for Huntress and Carrick. Puck slides past him deep into the Phoenix zone. Stone is after it. Around for Verbata. He was pressured by Edler. Santorelli after the loose puck. Checked by Schlemko. But Shin Carrick keeps after it. Even while tackled to the ice, he was able to free it up for a teammate. Coyotes wind up with a puck though, and here they come to center. Rabatta put one in the middle. That was broken up by the long reach of Alex Edler, and Brad Richardson has the puck. Eight and a half minutes into a scoreless first. Hunter Shinkarik at the end of his shift. Backhands the puck forward. Didn't get it deep, though. And Brule skates back the other way. Lost the puck in his feet, and Kevin Bx is able to tip it out. Jason Garrison having trouble with that puck. Here's a sharp angle shot on the long He held it up. Garrison makes a pass up the middle of Sestito, who relays to Bo Horvat. Checked by Miele. Horvat goes after the puck again. It comes free to Brule. And the Coyotes with a couple of tight passes get out to center. Here's Miele moving in. Drop feed. Brule with a shot. Wide the goal. Puck comes in front. Luongo was able to block it. And Jason Garrison takes control for Vancouver. Sestito with a long pass to an open wing. Back for the puck is Ekman Larson. He banks the puck into Vancouver territory. Icing waved off. Alberts goes back. Can't get a buy for Metz. Yannick Hampton was fighting for the puck. Alberts after. Works it free to Yannick Weber. Here's Daniel Sedin. Rink wide pass to Henrik. Took it off his skate. Hansen going to the net. Henrik centers for Hansen. He couldn't make contact. Slap pass in front. And no tip. Unfortunately for the Canucks, now Daniel Sedin from behind the net comes up front of the backhand, threw it to the crease, that's taken away by Phoenix. Daniel holds the puck in with a pass to Henrik, back for Daniel, but it's off his skate and out to center. Henrik Sedin wants more. Slides one for Daniel, comes back to Henrik, he shoots it in for Hansen. Daniel goes to the front, Yannick Hansen looking there. Henrik, in deep for Daniel. Morris is on him. Daniel Sedin back to Chris Tanev. Here's Edler taking a look. Wrist shot from that hit Hansen in front, I think. Puck stayed out. The Coyotes clear the zone. Edler with a quick turn inside his line. 
pass for Daniel Sedin, who's going to head to the bench, but not before he flips one forward, intended for Kessler. Winding up with the puck is Chris Tannen. In the second half of the first period, still no score. The Cox and the Phoenix Coyotes. Vancouver won the season series 2-1 to one last year, and the Phoenix Coyotes called for icing for a face-off in the Phoenix zone. Well, with the suspensions, three young guys get to play. Hunter Shinkarit, good on the four check, controlling the puck along the boards. You wonder about the how long these guys will stay around. And would you think that they'd get the nine-game trial? Or they have to be sent back. You, you would think that what's transpired, particularly as it pertains to Cassian and David Booth, depending on how long he's out, that that becomes more of a palatable option. Maybe not the best case scenario, but an option nonetheless. Here's Alex Burroughs with a centering pass. Higgins couldn't get to it. The exit over Edler with a shot, and that was blocked in front. Kessler trying to get one through. Still after the puck. Kessler back to Edler. He shoots another block, and that fell. Clinkhammer. Here's Ryan Kessler once more. Kevin Bieksa cutting in. Bieksa shoots, and that was stopped by Thomas Grice. Clinkhammer without his stick, trying to glove the puck out. Now kicks it back towards Slemko, who clears the puck out. Clinkhammer limps to the bench. Here's a chance for the Coyotes. Max Domi had Hansel in front, but couldn't settle the puck. And the Canucks work it out to Hunter Shinkarik. The exit joins the rush. Pass in front for him is broken up. And now the Coyotes will try to take advantage. Rabada in on the right wing. Slides one in front. Hansel dishes off. Now here's a chance. Oh, what a stop by Luongo. And then another one off Rabada. He stopped Ekman Larson and then Rabada to keep it a scoreless game. And Luongo might be shaken up. Two big stops for Roberto Luongo. He might be nursing a little something after that work. He'll try to shake it off after stopping two great chances for the Coyotes in front. Roberto Luongo's at the bench. Mike Bernstein had the ice bag during the break. On Roberto's thumb or hand, what a great save on the original shot comes through. And then he stretched out and uh, there's a melee with the sticks, and I think one of the sticks catches his glove hand, his own guys, there's a couple of Coyotes in there, Brad Richardson's in there, and Roberto goes to the bench and had it tended to during our timeout. Saw the second chance actually hit the post. That's why people, when people ask me, do you like TV better or radio? <laughs> yes. See, on radio, that would have been that was two great, great saves. Save. Ah, but the replay shows it was a great save in a post. Howdy. On the defensive here as Santorelli rushes up. Sends one towards Richardson. Puck played around. Weber holds it into the right corner. Here's Richardson working on Rundblad. Three Canucks in behind the goal again. Santorelli trying to free up the puck. Richardson comes up with it. Cycles for Santorelli. Shinkarik, the third member of this forward unit. Puck taken away by Rundblad, who stops to find some room, shovels the puck towards Domi, but he can't get it out. Good forecheck for the Canucks. Richardson battling Hansel for the puck. Domi comes up with it and moves it out to center. Martin Hansel, poke check by Bieksa. Onto the ice is Brule, who gets around Bieksa. Almost put himself offside, but now the Coyotes send the puck in. Miele. Being watched by Horvat, who knocks him down. Under seven minutes to go in a scoreless first period, and Andrew Alberts picks up the puck. Throws it up the middle, comes right back to him, so Alberts skates some more. Bobbled into the Phoenix Blue Line. And the Coyotes retake possession in their own zone. There's a puck off the stick of Brendan Gunks, and it goes over the glass for a whistle. Hockey band, please welcome We've seen a more aggressive forecheck by the Canucks here in this first period, and John, you mentioned the three guys behind the goal line. That's happened a few times. That's one of the John Tortorella systems. Try to play in the offensive zone more often. Has to decide 
between now and tomorrow what kind of lineup he'll dress against the San Jose Sharks tomorrow night. Here's a race for the puck and Garrison first to the dot so it's an icing call and we'll check in with Murph. John we got some baseball on the network tomorrow. Dodgers versus San Fran West Coast game starting 7 o'clock in the Pacific region on Sportsnet 1. We'll be in the neighborhood. Can we get to the first inning and then <laughs> watch the first inning and somehow get to the Shark Tank? A couple of teams had a chance to clinch today, didn't they? Henrik Sedin wins a face-off. Chris Tanev elects to throw the puck to the far corner. Daniel Sedin leaves for him. He finds Daniel, throws one in front, comes right through to Tanev at the left point. Tanev for Hansen. Rings one around. Here's Henrik Sedin. Daniel trying to give him a passing option. Winds up with a puck in the corner. Frees it up for Henrik. Henrik to Edlin. Long shot deflected by Hansen. Loose puck at the side. There's a penalty coming up to Phoenix. Delayed call. It's oh, pardon me. It's against the Canucks. Goaltender interference. A Vancouver penalty is Grice must have been bumped on that scoring opportunity. Hansen with the tip, but Daniel Sedin is heading for two. For the first time in over a decade, the Canucks will host every team in the NHL on home ice. Tickets still available for the home opener Saturday, October 5th versus the Oilers. Could be a good one. Tuesday, October 8th versus Corey Schneider and the Devils. Visit Canucks.com slash tickets for all home game availability. Daniel Sedin into the goaltender and Derek Morris gives him a shot. That was one of those borderline. I wonder if he called it for the original cruise through or the collision that Morris seemed to create. In any event, it's a power play, and Luongo forced to make an early stop off Mikel Bodker. Canucks come up with a puck and send it down the ice. Coyotes off to a hot start in the preseason with a power play. They're six for 19. After struggling with the man advantage a year ago. Burroughs trying to get the puck out. It was held in. Kessler has an opportunity, and with one hand on the stick, he's able to poke the puck to center. 45 seconds gone in the penalty to Daniel Sedin. Bodker to Yandel. Back to Bodker. Fell down as he hit the blue line, and he's shaken up. He might have caught a stick on the way down. And he'll head to the Phoenix bench after that mishap of the Vancouver blue line. Chris Higgins doing some good work up ice, killing time behind the Phoenix goal, and that draws a reaction from the crowd. Higgins continues to fight for the puck. Works it free to 10, and there's Bodker being checked out as the puck winds up behind the Phoenix goal. He ran into Henrik Sedin's stick, lost his footing. Ekman Larson. That one deflects off Domi into the Vancouver zone. Hansel sends it around for Verbata. 30 seconds to go on the penalty to Daniel Sedin. Richardson up with the puck. Hounded from behind by Verbata, but gets it to Santorelli, and here's Tannen. Killing more time by playing the puck in behind the Phoenix goal. 10 seconds to go in the Phoenix power play. There's four minutes left in the first period. A scoreless time. Kyle Chipchur is it through to Brown on the backhand, being checked by Alberts. He slid it wide. Weber's onto the puck. Lees for Alberts. Daniel Sedin out of the box. And the Canucks for the successful penalty kill. Here's Daniel in with the puck on the right wing. Lees for Henrik. Henrik Sedin shoots, stop, rebound, kick towards the goal. Weber after it, tried to send it for Hansen. Still loose, and Grice reaches out and grabs the puck after the Canucks, right after the penalty kill, went on the attack. Well, Henrik and Daniel have had a very good first period in this game, and and Daniel Sedin out of the penalty box gives it to his brother. The rebound comes out. Anik Weber just can't get it in front as Thomas Grice does a nice job. Michael Bodker's on the way down. Henrik Sedin's going for the puck. Catches Bodker in the chin. Face off of the Phoenix zone with three and a half minutes to go in the first. Pucking loose to Higgins. He scores! the draw a rolling puck and Chris Higgins makes it one nothing well a scrambled face off this wasn't even a clean win for Ryan Kessler 
Uh, I assume Kessler will get the only assist on this, John, and you can see it's a scrambled draw. And Higgins jumps it. Maybe Alex Burrows, because he touched it. It's rolling, it's rolling. Burrows is there. Higgins comes in and sneaks it by Thomas Grace. 16-29, the time of the opening goal. Yannick Weber in his own zone around for Burroughs, can't move it out. Yandel slaps one wide, clink hammer after the puck to the side of the goal, falls down behind him. And Kessler's on the loose puck. Higgins flips it out to center, falls perfectly at the feet of Burroughs. Kessler's in front, Burroughs cutting in, centers, Kessler stopped by Grice. Just the one assist to Kessler on the Higgins goal. And he almost had a goal to go with his assist on that setup from Burroughs. Now Higgins is in again, throwing one in front, and there'll be a penalty as Schlemko took down Bieksa going to the net. So Kevin Bieksa getting involved in the offense, and he puts Vancouver on the power play. Now Chris Higgins does the right thing as the Canucks load to one side on this faceoff. He's in back. Alex Burroughs cuts in and Higgins just jumps in on that loose puck, snaps it by Ryan Kessler. Beautiful pass by Alex Burroughs, feeding Ryan Kessler and the goaltender drives again with a good save. And Schlemko, interference or hooking, either or, and I think they called it hooking. Power play Canucks still looking for their first goal of the preseason with a man advantage. They're 0 for 10. Here's a shot from Garrison, loose in front, cleared by the Coyotes. And shot down the ice by Bodker. Here's Alex Edler. Finds Henrik Sedin ahead to Daniel Sedin. Flip one in front for Kessler. Comes back, Garrison. We're shot blocked by Ekman Larson. John Tortorella saying he's a fan of Jason Garrison's shoot first mentality, but he couldn't get that one through. Edler rushes out. Drops for Henrik Sedin. Kessler in on over the Phoenix line. Gets by Yandel and shoots the puck around for Daniel City. Daniel Sedin still with the puck. Banks it around for his brother. Henrik through the crease, knocked away by Grice. Edler with a shot, kicked out. Kessler after the rebound. Henrik leaves for Daniel. Garrison stopped by Grice as he went post to post. Here's Daniel Sedin to Henrik Sedin. Back to Edler. He shoots. Glove saved by Grice as he fought through the screen of Kessler and held on to that puck. Hey, Thomas Grice has been the first star of this first period. Power play looks very good. Good puck movement. Good shots. Grice, good stick on this one as the pass is coming through to Daniel. Makes an excellent save on the first shot, then the rebound and gets in position to make the save on the third one. And finally reaches around Ryan Kessler to stop the play. The X of the long shot. Grice never saw it, but they hit him. Gets him after rebound. He scores. Wide open net for Yannick Hansen. It is 2-0. The power play. Go to the net. Create some havoc. Shot and a rebound. Just get it through. Shot. Thomas Grice can't find it. And Yannick Hansen's there with Alex Burroughs. Hansen's the one who finds it first. Second goal of the preseason for Yannick Hansen. Well, that shows the importance of getting that shot from the point through. It wasn't very hard. It was just a little wrist shot. But when you've got traffic, it doesn't have to be hard. Similar to a chance he had in Edmonton on Saturday when a puck got behind the Oiler goalie. But this time, Hansen able to find the open net. Hard hit at center by Alberts. And here's Santorelli in, risking one towards Shinkarik, but he couldn't reach the puck. Into the final minute of the first period, connects with a couple of lead goals. Two minutes and four seconds apart, and they have a 2-0 lead. Runblad ahead to Verbata. Here's Ekman Larson. Two and ready for Verbata. And he banks the puck in over the back of her blue line. Henrik Sedin tips the puck into the Phoenix Zoo. The two defensemen, Bieksa and Garrison, get the assists on the Yannick Hansen goal, who's after the puck in the Phoenix Zone. Henrik 
Garrett City to Daniel City, trying to bank the puck back to Garrison. That was knocked away, and Schlemko takes control for Phoenix. Puck clear the line, held in by Daniel City, and he throws one in front. That hit the leg of Michael Stone. Now an attempted shot to flex to the left point, and that'll do it for the first period. Canucks with some late offense, and they'll take a two-goal lead into the first intermission. Remember the first exhibition game when the shots were so one-sided? Shots on goal, 17-8 in favor of the Canucks. Good pressure, and Roberto Luongo very good in that. Well, we talked uh, before the game about this being the strongest lineup the Canucks had iced, and that it would be best if it looked that way, and it has so far through 20 minutes. We'll hear from Jason Garrison with Dan Murphy. He had an assist on the 2 nothing goal. But before that, our panel alongside Gary Valk, here's Don Taylor after one period in Vancouver. All right, thanks, uh, Johnny. Don Taylor along with uh, Gary Valk. That sound you're hearing, Vancouver hockey fans saying, that's more like it. The Canucks came into this game with an 0-3 record in the preseason. They lead Phoenix after one period of play at uh, Rogers Arena by a score of 2-0 goals by Yannick Hansen and this man, Chris Higgins. Again, 2-0 Vancouver over Phoenix. Gary and I will be back with a recap in a minute. Rogers Arena, Canucks taking on the Coyotes, fourth of six preseason games for Vancouver, looking for that first preseason win, off to a 2-0 start, Chris Higgins uh, late in the first, 16-29, with his first of the preseason for Yannick Hansen scored in the power play, I lied, Garrison did get an assist, but Bieksa and Weber did, in that period in which the Canucks outshot the Coyotes, 17-8, John? Well, Dan, suspension's obviously the talk around the Canucks today, and it's no question that Brendan Shanahan and his department have a thankless job at times, John, uh, but it is a fine line between what draws a hearing and what doesn't, and you wonder if the Canucks have a bit of a beef uh, with a hit in game one of the preseason. Well, Matt Pellick catches Andrew Alberts, and that's a little higher to me than this one by Dale Weiss on Taylor Hall. And uh, Dale Weiss, and people say he's a repeat offender. He's not a repeat offender. He has that reputation, and it is Taylor Hall, although Taylor Hall has been hit a few times like that because he goes down low. When he, he, he's pressured, he, he seems to lean down low. And uh, Dale Weiss gets suspended for the exhibition series. So, you know, it, it, it's... You're, you're smiling. <laughs> well, I'm saying that it, it's not really that much of a punishment, although Dale Weiss is one of those players, I'm sure, he would like to play just to uh, cement his position on this team. And yet, Pellick doesn't even register and Andrew Alberts didn't go down or wasn't hurt on the play but it was a similar hit for sure Alberts on the bench right now it's Garrison and BX are there and around the exit caught for Deeks and the puck rolled off the end of his stick as he tried to tuck it in past Luongo and again the Canuck netminder shaken up on that collision the early chance for Phoenix but it stays 2-0 Canucks and uh, Bodker is helping Roberto Luongo get back to his feet. Bodker is full speed on fresh ice. Goes right around Kevin Bieksa, and Bodker tries to go backhand, but he's in too tight. Loses it off the end. Roberto stayed right with him. And give Roberto credit because uh, Bodker had to try and go around him. He had no play, and it's just the contact. Roberto looks like he's going to be all right now. Like full speed, and Kevin Bieksa caught flat-footed at the blue line. Dave Moss after the pocket center, checked by Daniel Sedin. Coyotes start up from their own zone. Derek Morris drops for Keith Yandel. Pass up the middle, deflected in by Antoine Vermette. The exit back for the puck, Vermette intercepts in the corner. Picking his way through traffic, passes to Yandel, over to Morris, slight shot, wide of the goal, there's a penalty coming up. Broken stick out there. You wonder if that might be a piece of evidence for a slashing call as the Canucks are going to be shorthanded with Jason Garrison heading to the box. Well, Antoine Vermette's stick gets chopped in half, and uh, that's why Garrison's going on. Garrison comes down 
halfway and the shaft splinters. I guess you can't say splinters now. Shatters. Shatter. No. <laughs> Shatter. I don't want to oh. break the house. Just trying to help you out. Thank you. You're such a wordsmith. Yes. Second power play for Phoenix. But not before they pick up what looks like splinters, John. I think you should have yes. just stuck <laughs> yes. with what you were Thank you. saying. Attention to detail from linesman Lonnie Cameron. And now he's set to drop the puck as Vaughn Rohde gets rid of the evidence. Coyotes control off the draw. Runeblad at the blue line. Here's Bravada. Down low. Domi to Bravada. Runeblad. Other side, one timer, Loango sliding to his left, made the save on that shot from Ekman Larson. Puck stays in the back of his own. Hansel goes down in a battle with Ed, who picks up the puck, rings it around, and gets it down the ice. Burroughs and Kessler head to the bench. Santorelli comes on up front along with Brad Richardson. Weber and Alberts have taken over on defense. Here's Hansel into the middle for Bata. Dishes off, Runeblatt centering, hands all scores! Snuck it through the legs of Roberto Luongo, and on the power play, the Coyotes cut the lead in half. A beautiful play by the Phoenix Coyotes entering the zone. Martin Hansel goes up the middle, and the quick pass is just tipped through Roberto Luongo. Martin Hansel's right in the middle. He's got lots of time stick on the ice and just tips it. Yannick Weber is there but not close enough to stop Hansel from getting good wood on that one. Minute 34, the time of the power play goal that gets the Coyotes to within one. We haven't talked about the goalie's equipment, but Roberto's pads are only half an inch shorter. And the uh, goal pads this year, some of the goalies, it's two and a half, three inches, but Roberto's, uh, the 45% from his knee to his pelvis, his pads were only shortened by half an inch. I don't think it would have made any difference on that one. Handle with his first. Now here's a two-on-one for the Canucks. Santorelli with Weber. Santorelli in. He shoots off the blocker of Thomas Grice. Santorelli gets the puck again. Mike Santorelli to the blue line. Andrew Alberts in around for Hunter Shinkarik. Helping him out is Brad Richardson. Richardson falls down but gets the puck back to Alberts. Long wrist shot handled by Grice. And he hangs on with Hunter Shinkarik looking for a loose puck. The power play on the rush, Martin Hansel does a nice job. Goes right down the middle and he gets the tip in. Yannick Weber gets too deep. Instead of stopping in the slot, he skated by the defensive area and Hansel's able to tip it through Roberto Luongo. Little Horvato for a face-off against Hansel. Gets it to Bieksa, now to Garrison, and that one hit a body on the way through. Sestito finds a loose puck down for Horvat, centering for Brendan Gomps. That was broken up. And the Coyotes bring the puck to center. Hansel flips one to the far corner. Bieksa being pursued by Verbata. Gomps tips the puck free, and Sestito tries to move it out. Tom Sestito checks just inside the blue line. Bieksa trying to move the pile. And the puck squirts free at center to Morris, who rips it in off the glass. Kevin Bieksa ahead to Brendan Gonks. Overskated the puck at the Phoenix blue line. And back comes the other number 50, Antoine Vermette. And offside was Moss as Vermette cut to the middle. Murph. We'll celebrate Canucks night every Thursday in October at Boston Pizza and enter to win a weekly Canucks jersey prize. Boston Pizza is the official sports bar of the Vancouver Canucks. This is Boston Pizza. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, thin crust. Breakfast. <laughs> nachos. Very good nachos in Boston Pizza. They had a uh, mobile tent unit set up at the Canucks annual Jake Milford Golf Tournament. That was a nice, tasty surprise on the 17th tee. That's what all your team won. That's about it. 
Here's Alex Hedler with a sharp angle shot. Rebound. Henrik Sedin trying to poke it home. And Price with the goal line stand. Henrik again. Behind the net for Hansen. Anna Hansen to his knees. Back up. Nice pass. Edler. Wrist shot. Deflected wide. Edler moves down to the left point. Moss clears to the line. Hansen covering for the defenseman. Holds the puck in the zone. Here's Daniel Sedin to Henrik Sedin. Back to Daniel Sedin. Looking in front. Daniel still with the puck. Comes out of the corner. Flips one back for Tannen. And his pass for Edler is tipped out by David Moss. Here's Tannen. Pass to center. Picked off. Henrik gets the puck back though. Daniel to start a change. Tips it in behind the Phoenix goal. Runeblatt to Chipchura. Higgins gets a piece of him, but the puck gets through to Chris Brown. Canucks take it back, and Weber throws one forward. Here's Kessler in right side. Wrist shot, and a shoulder save for Grice. Kessler with a rising wrister, trying to beat him stick side. Now Kessler steps into his man inside the blue line. A tripping call up coming, however, as Chipchura went down, and I think Andrew Alberts is heading to the penalty box. Thomas Grice has been very good on Henrik Sedin. He makes the play in tight. Alex Edler throws it in. Henrik Sedin tried to draw to his backhand. Grice using the stick in the Ryan Kessler. This is a good shot because not only does Grice make the save, but he has to commit, and that rebound is sitting right there, but the Canucks can't get to it. And Roberts is off for tripping. Coyotes already have a power play goal in this game. They're one for two. And the percentage still going up seven for 21 in the preseason. Even I can do that now. <laughs> and a third opportunity here, a chance to tie the hockey game. And with Mike Rivera, who's not in the lineup tonight, you know he's a power play specialist. Santrelli to the line, couldn't move it out past Michael Stone, but following up is Jason Garrison, who risks the puck down the ice. Keith Yandel. 30 points in 48 games last year. It's a 51-point pace for Yandel on a full season. His career best was 59. Whoa! I don't think Luongo would have been ready for that one as Edler missed the pass back from Tanev, but... No harm done, and Chris Tanev sends the puck down the ice. What was it he said about Grice six seconds in? Yes. Expect it when you least expect yes. it? Yes. Rabata dumps the puck in. Max Doney sends it behind the goal. Edler steps into him. Puck gets by Edler, however. Doney comes out with it. To the left point to Oliver Ackman Larson. Right point, Rudenblatt. Here's Rabata on the right wing. Back to Runeblad, takes a look, fakes the shot, now passes to Ekman Larson. 30 seconds to go on the power play for Phoenix. Verbata top of the circle, wrist shot, and Luongo, the left pad. Stealing the puck is Henrik Sedin, couldn't move it out, but forcing the puck to center was Tanev. As Hansel was all alone in front, but they couldn't get the puck through to him. Dozen seconds to go on the Phoenix power play. And Domi risks the puck around to the near side. Tanev tying up Hansel. Hansen's there as well. Here's Alberts onto the ice. So Phoenix now one for three on the power play. Seven for 22 is math that's a little tough. Yes. 21, I can yeah, do that. 21 year old, right? Seven for 22, a little tough. Here's Schlemko with a slap shot. Reaching out with a hand was Alberts to steer wide. Now he throws a hit on Moss. Higgins had his pass blocked and the puck stays in the Vancouver zone. Edler and Tan have been out there a while. They'll try to get off the ice, but Hansen can't move through center. The duo on defense is forced to stay on. Stone with a shot and a blocker save for Luongo. Hansen missed the puck. Tanev gets it. Finds Alberts. And Hansen finally able to gain center. Moves in over the Phoenix line. Backhand pass for Higgins. Winds up on the right wing boards. Higgins back to Bieksa. In deep for Bo Horvath. He shakes off a check. Centers for Higgins, and that was knocked away. Horvat feeds the line. Garrison down for Horvat. Spinning, trying to get away from Vermette. That didn't work. And here's Mikel Bodker. Flipping the puck in, he'll head to the Phoenix bench. Bieksa checked by Brown behind the goal. Kevin Bieksa gets the puck back. Couldn't move it through the pile, but 
Horvat has it to the line, held in by Yandel. Puck loose on the far side. Garrison after it. Sestito there as well, but they can't move out past Klinkham. Here's Chip Chura. Chip Chura looking for room. Finds some. Passes to the right point. Morris with a wrist shot. Blocked by Sestito. And here comes Brendan Gantz to center. Slid it from his own side. And that's icing. So the faceoff will be in the Vancouver zone after we check in with Dan Murphy. We're getting down to the final stretch of the baseball season. Right now, the Blue Jays in a series of the Baltimore Orioles. You can catch that game tomorrow. Coverage beginning 3 o'clock Pacific time on Sportsnet East Ontario West and Pacific. A couple power plays in this second period have really shifted the momentum of this hockey game. A lot of play in the Vancouver end of the ice, and there'll be more now as the Canucks are again called for ice with just over eight minutes gone in the middle frame. Phoenix is traditionally a good face-off team, and Antoine Vermette is one of the best in the league. He won five of six in the first period. John Tortorella looks on. Hansel's not bad. And Ribeiro is good. So those three centermen, once the regular season starts, Phoenix should be good in the draws again. Oh, the exit hit the referee with that clearing attempt. He's all right. Puck deflected over the glass off Dennis LaRue. He'll shake it off, and we'll come back to Rogers Arena right after this. Fox Football Daily covers football in a live, fast-paced format, combining up-to-the-minute news, highlights, features, and analysis. This one-hour show hosted by NFL Sunday broadcaster Kurt Menefee. Analysis and opinion from some of the biggest names to ever play the game, including Ronde Barber, Ronde Moss, Brian Orocker, and Terry Bradshaw. Do you watch that so that you can Murph should. knowledgeable picks <laughs> on the weekend? You had such a great weekend this weekend. You must have been watching every day. I was better than Dan. He got four right. Well, that's good. Four out of 15. 2-1 hockey in. Canucks on top. And bringing the puck to center is Hunter Shinkara. Defers to Yannick Weber, who's in on the left wing with a wrist shot. Caught off by Grice. Rebound. Richardson tried to swipe it out of midair, but couldn't get good wood on it. Coyotes clear the zone. Alberts quickly to Shinkara. He wrists one towards the middle. That was blocked by Miele. Rundblad for Phoenix. Reaching out to knock that pass away with Shinkara. Rundblad will try again. Nine minutes into the second. Pitching was Edler. He knocked down Brule. And Santorelli gets the puck at center. Comes free to Alex Edler. Brule looking for revenge. Forced the play offside. As he tried to step up and hit Edler in a tit-for-tat move. Brad Richardson going to the net. I like this play by Yannick Weber. You're the defenseman. Try not to get caught shot in a rebound. And Brad Richardson's there. Uh, but it's on the backhand. Alex Edler on Gilbert Brule. Ended up turning at the last second. Kyle Chipchura. Chasing after the puck with Ryan Kester. Tuchura gets there, centers, and that was out of the reach of Rob Punkin. Burroughs clears the puck. Higgins gives chase on Chris Brown. Kester checks Derek Morris. Burroughs on the puck, sends it to the near side, waiting as Chris Tanev, wrist shot, and that deflects to the corner off Morris. Brown to center, finds Tuchura, trying to return the puck, and it winds up on the stick of Alex Burroughs. Here's Tannen flipping on to center. Morris takes possession inside his own line. He handles his defense partner, and he passes back to Morris. Yandel steps up. He's got some speed through center. In front for Higgins, and tipping that one. Save off. Off Grice, and that was a hard shot off the stick. Trailing by just one. Towards the regular season. 
This is the fourth of six preseason games, and the Canucks play another one tomorrow in San Jose. They're trying to take this one home. They lead 2-1 halfway through. Well, both teams have a more representative lineup, and you can feel it. Yeah. Better pace, prettier plays. First period, we had the Canucks five times had good four checks where they had at least two guys behind the goal line. Sometimes here in the second, it's only happened once. Here's Daniel Sedin skating through center. Pass through for Henrik, hop over his stick. Stone takes possession, clears the puck out, but that is too much on. It'll be icing. And they'll face off in the Phoenix zone. Now, do you think the Players Association will go for the hybrid ice? I don't know. I'm getting mixed messages on that. I one. am too. I, I, some of the players and some of the ones I've talked to have said that they like the old icing rule where you have the race, the competitive nature, although you look at some of the injuries. Well, even on the weekend, here's a Weber with a wrist shot and a stop by Grice. But just doing a game that involved Fadoon in uh, Edmonton, and you think, is it really worth it? Here's Alex Burroughs. Pass back, Weber with room, shoots, he scores! We've heard about the Yannick Weber slapper, and there you saw it to make it 3-1. Well, a right-hand shot wearing number six. <laughs> yeah, sound familiar? Yes. What a play by Alex Burroughs, too. You don't just throw it into a maze in front of the net. Burroughs waits, waits. Now there's traffic in front. Gets it back to Weber. Martin Hansel goes out, doesn't get there in time. And the good screen by Ryan Kessler. Weber up and over the shoulder of Thomas Grice. And Kessler getting out of the way. So back to a two-goal lead for the Canucks. As he cut in front of his own goal, he able to work the puck to Edler, who wrists it around for Brendan Gauntz. Gauntz gets the puck outside the line. Vermette turns in the neutral zone. Gauntz tried to poke the puck away from him. Now Bodker hit from by Sestito. And Horvat winds up with the puck. Sestito trying to tip it over the Phoenix blue line. That was blocked by Ekman Larson, who outmuscles Gauntz to tip the puck back and takes possession himself. And call will bring the face off down the ice with 8.05 to go in the second. Well, and the shoot first mentality that John Tortorella is trying to ingrain in his defenseman, Yannick Weber, with the big shot. Good play on the power play. First goal of the preseason. He's got three points now. And tried another shot there, but couldn't get it through. Goal and an assist for Yannick Weber in this game. And interesting to note that John Tortorella, when asked about the makeup of his roster the other day, made it sound pretty clear that he's not in favor of carrying eight defensemen. So you have to figure and battle for a right-hand spot back there. It's only going to be seven. Is down to Weber and Corrado. There's a high stick on Henrik Sedin and a penalty coming up to Kyle Chipchura. And they come over to check Henrik. Kyle Ch Chipchura is in on the four check and with one hand on his stick right underneath the visor of Henrik Sedin. Canucks second power play. They converted on their only other one, the Yannick Hansen rebound goal in the first period. Burroughs takes the face here. As the Canucks send out a power play unit of Burroughs, Higgins, and Hansen. Sedin's just finished a shift, so expect that duo and Ryan Kessler to come on for the latter part of the power play if this first group fails to score. Bieksa starts from behind the bank of the goal. Passes through to Higgins, across to center, Chris Tannen. Ooh. Okay, Morris got a leg out, trip Tanev up, play goes on. 
Hanson after a loose puck on the end. Burroughs tips it free for Higgins in the corner. He runs into a couple of Coyotes. Clink hammer after the pump. Taken down, and that'll take Vancouver off the power play. Alex Burroughs will head to the box, and they'll play four on four for a minute 15. Well, one of the things about your power play is the little battles along the boards. You have to be hard on the puck. And the Canucks here, they, they're the same number of players and out battled than Chris Burroughs. Well, there's the leg of Derek Morris catching Chris Tanev. Tanev didn't like it. Sedin's come out in the four on four. With the face off to the right of Luongo. Coyotes. Brulee after the puck. Passes over. Ekman Larson with room. Settles it. Shoots it. And Luongo got the right pad blocker. Up. Adler couldn't find that puck as it was slid towards him by Garrison. Now Garrison tries again. Daniel Sedin couldn't come up with it. Runeblatt to the near side. Brulee checked by Garrison, who gloves the puck to the line, but held in by Gilles Brulee. Sprawling was Edler to block a centering pass. Now Luongo tips one away from the crease area. Coyotes hold the puck in. Runeblad bodied by Henriksen. Daniel picks up the puck and gets it out to center. Fighting off the check of Ekman Larson, he passes back to Edler. Six minutes to go in the second. Canucks leading Phoenix 3-1. to one. Coyotes with too many. Play goes on as the fans holler at the officials. Botker coming onto the ice had that puck hit him. Oh, that pass hit Kessler intercepted by Botker off the post. Beat Luongo glove side but rang it off the iron and it's still a two goal lead for the Canucks. Here's Yandel. Coyotes on the power play for another 30 seconds. With Burroughs serving the remainder of his tripping line. Botker can't hold the line and they'll have to regroup in their own zone. All four Canucks trying to change and they're able to. 15 seconds to go on the penalty to Alex Burroughs. There's a lead pass. Falling down was Domi but he's back up. Malongo looks behind him but he's got the puck. Domi trying to sneak it between the pads and Roberto Luongo makes the save. Michael Bodker gets his chance. You hate it when you're a penalty killer and you're just trying to make a simple play and that's what Chris Higgins trying to do but he hit Ryan Kessler's stick and Bodker rattles it off the post. Look at Max Domi take this pass. Knocks it down and creates a chance for himself, and that just shows the kind of skills he has. Here he is again. Max Domi coming up front with a wrist shot, missed on the short side, and that puck ricochets all the way out to center, which does it for the Burroughs penalty. Phoenix now one for four on the power play. Still trailing three to one. Here's Domi again. Centering pass. Verbata checked by Alberts. Now Domi follows up, and Luongo stops him on the short side. Verbata to the net. Luongo stopped that, and Shinkarek picks up the loose puck. Out to center for Richardson. Morris sends that the other way. Hansel ahead to Domi, who's been prominent in the last few minutes. Hansel to Verbata. Here's Domi taking a swipe of the puck on the back end. Clearing is Santorelli. Shinkarek can't catch up at center. Richardson will try. He's hit by Hansel, who picks up the puck for Phoenix. Four minutes remaining in the second period. Luongo out of his net. Passes to the side for Alex Edler. He dumps the puck back for Yannick Weber. Tom Sestito back to Edler. Up ahead, here comes Bo Horvat. Four Canucks to the Phoenix line. Horvat trying to find Weber, who's got to hustle back now as Chipchura sends the puck ahead to Klinkham. Chipchura follows on. He's got Korpakowski in front, and the puck came back to Chipchura, who shot it wide of the goal. Horvat can't get it out. Put in front, and that hit Chipchura looking for the deflection. Centered through the crease. Here's Ekman Larson. Sestito checks him, dumps the puck back for Edler. He's able to step around his man and get the puck back to Tom Sestito, who throws it to Yannick Weber. Weber to Gons. He backhands the puck deep into Phoenix territory. Hornback collects in the corner. 
Cole Horvat behind the net for Sestito. He's checked, but is able to poke the puck to Horvat. Back to the line. Here's BX. A slap shot blocked. Tipchura clears the puck ahead. Klinkhammer can't get it by BX. But Ekman Larson's able to lift it high and down into the Vancouver zone. Under three minutes to go in the second. Keith Handel. Green wide pass. Bodker checked by Hansen. He tries to go wide on Morris and does. He's got Dana Zine in front. And the pass went off Yandel and just wide of the goal. Henrik City. Back pass at center. Picked off. Coyotes deep in their own end. Trying to contend with the Canuck forecheck. And the official who was in the middle of things. Henrik City with a shot wide of the goal. Here's Garrison to the left point. Quickly down to Hansen. Behind the net for Henrik. He missed the puck. The Exa moves down to the right point. Henrik along the boards. Hansen after the puck in the corner. Vermette moves it forward, held in by BX, who gloves it towards the front, chases after the puck, it comes to the line to Garrison. Into the corner for Henrik Sedin, another two minutes to go in the second period. Morris went down under the check of Daniel Sedin, who pokes the puck in front while prone on the ice. And the Coyote's able to intercept and get it out. No icing as BX goes back. Garrison for Burroughs out of his reach. Miele flips the puck into the Vancouver zone with 90 seconds remaining in the second period. Lori Korpikoski trying to pull his way in front, passes to the line. Schlemko at the left point, wrist shot, bad hit, Garrison. And Burroughs able to slide the puck to center to Chris Higgins. Three Canucks into the Phoenix zone, Higgins centers, Burroughs to the net, stopped by Grice. Thought he might pull it to the backhand, but he tried to go over the short side shoulder. Grice with the save, and the Canucks still on top by two. Get your official Canucks calendar at your local pharmacy. Available October 1st. It includes an exclusive Canucks photo book. It's only $6.99 with partial proceeds benefiting the Canucks for Kids Fund in support of Canuck Place. The official Canucks calendar, exclusively at pharmacy while supplies lost. Last. One of the things we talked about was chemistry. Look at this backhand pass, Chris Higgins to Alex Burrows. And that was one of the keys to the game. Get some chemistry in the lines, and that was a beautiful play, Chris Higgins to Alex Burrows. Brad Richardson out for this faceoff against Martin Hansel. Richardson wins it to Andrew Alberts. Here's Mike Santorelli. Second period, battle for the puck continues deep in the Phoenix zone. Puck comes through to Schlemko, and he's able to get it off the boards and out. Brad Richardson ahead to Mike Santorelli, did well to pick up that pass and spin away from his check. He sends the puck in deep, Shinkarek staples Schlemko to the boards. Schlemko, chicken wing on the stick of Shinkarek, hoping to draw a penalty. Play goes on. Here's Yannick Weber. Up to Brad Richardson. He tips the puck in with 20 seconds to go in the second period. Out with the puck is Max Domi. Rabada takes his pass. Thought time was running on further than it was. Tried a long shot from center. And that sailed high and wide. Canucks break back with a couple seconds left. Daniel Sedin needs to shoot it. Try to move and that'll do it. Teams trading goals here in the second. Hansel for Phoenix before Yannick Weber got his first as a Canuck to make it 3-1. to one. Well, one of our keys to the game was learn the system. And in the first period, the Canucks really were able to get the four check going. Not so much in the second period as uh, Phoenix was able to carry the play a little more. Alex Burroughs with an assist on the Weber goal. Had a great chance late to make it 4-1 Canucks. But Burroughs will be speaking with our Dan Murphy in just a few moments. But before we hear from Murph and Alex, let's hear from Don and Gary. Falk and Taylor, take it away, Don. <laughs> Thank you, Shorthouse and uh, Gary. Yes, uh, Canucks up 3-1 uh, on Phoenix after two periods of play. Uh, Don Taylor along with uh, Gary Volk. 
Yannick Weber with two points, including his uh, first goal of the preseason, showing off the shot. Canuck fans, the Canucks themselves, are hoping to see a lot of uh, this season. Yes, Yannick Weber with one goal, 3-1, the Canucks, 3-2, uh, right? But yes, 3-1, the Canucks over Phoenix. Uh, we'll have more with Gary Volk in a bit. John, John up here and John on the bench now. It's getting easier. Yes, it is. It is getting easier. And there's the winningest American-born NHL coach. And I know people say, well, Ronnie Wilson, but Ronnie was born in Windsor, Ontario, oh. when his dad was playing with the Detroit Red Wings and uh, John Tortorella. And you look at this, and it's very impressive in the Stanley Cup, but remember when he first started the East Coast? First year there, he won a championship. Then in Rochester, second year in Rochester, win a championship. And then in Tampa, second year in Tampa, win a championship. So maybe the trend will continue. Those 410 career wins are 28th all time. Three behind Jack Adams. And then the next man on the list is Alain Vigneault. 3-1 Canucks as we head to the third period. Sedins and Hansen up front to start the period with Garrison and BX on defense. And they're announcing a scoring change to the Weber goal, giving an assist to Andrew Alberts rather than Brian Kessler. So Weber from Burroughs and Alberts. Yannick Weber doesn't care. He's got a goal and an assist on this, his 25th birthday. Here's Daniel Sedin bringing the puck out with a pass to Yannick Hansen. Slides the puck in and chases out. Brunblad there first. Hansen gets a piece of him. The puck is sent around for Max Domi. Domi to Verbata at center. Henrik Sedin takes the puck away, tries to get it through for Hansen, but is taken away by David Runblad. Chris Tannen having a little trouble handling the puck inside his own line, but recovers and gets it over to Alex Edler. Up for Higgins, who is just over the blue line by a hair. And the offside whistle from Vaughn Rohde blows play dead. Well, I want to remind you, the hit show Revolution returns to City, but it's on a new day and a new time. Wednesdays at 8 o'clock, Revolution on City TV. Oh, it, they, a cliffhanger at the end. The power came back for a little while, and there, there's missiles heading to the oh. couple of cities on the East Coast. Be still, my heart. Is there a show on that you don't know the <laughs> plot port note? Oh, I've never seen Breaking Bad, and I know you and Murph oh. sit there with all the tapes, and uh, I'm going to have to get the DVDs. One to go. Chris Brown, pointless in this one, but had been racking them up heading into this game. Five points in three preseason games before this one tonight. Backhanded into the Vancouver zone. Edler retrieves it as the rest of his teammates make a change. Edler wrist one in from center. Schlenko clears. Alberts on for Edler. Picks up the puck and dumps it back into the Phoenix zone. Two minutes gone, third period. Gilbert Brule picks up that puck. Sends it ahead for Korpakoski. Bumped by Alberts as he moved in. Weber after the puck in the corner. Three Canucks trying to move it ahead. And Alberts gets it through to Santorelli. Up for Shinkarik. And sidestepping Michael Stone. Shinkarik appeared to get a piece of the Phoenix defenseman who's shaken up. Now skating slowly back into the play. But Stone's going to head to the bench after that collision with Shinkarik just outside the Phoenix blue line. Ahead for Tom Sestito, who backhands the puck in. Brad Richardson after it for Vancouver. Bumped by Runeblad. Chipchura knocked down by Sestito as he made a pass. Canucks, Richardson just holds the puck in. Sestito after it along the boards. Picked up by Runeblad, who finds Dave Moss. Moss banks the puck ahead to Rob Klinkhammer. Centering pass, knocked away by the X, and now Klinkhammer at the side, and he shot it wide. Trying to go low to the stick side on a long go. Clank Hammer from the other side. Back to the blue line. Runeblad. Wrist shot. 
blocked by Sestito. And he settles the puck at center before backhanding into the Phoenix zone. Martin Hensel plays the puck over the Canucks line. Max Domi, nice spin move. Another nice move. Here's Bravada taking his pass. Wrist shot blocked. Handler got in front of it. Bravada holds the puck in. Down for Domi. Quick move to the middle. Domi for Hensel. Bravada couldn't pick up the puck, and Daniel Sedin skates to the center. Daniel in on the left wing in front for Hansen. Tripped up by Yandel and couldn't make good contact with the puck as he went hard to the front. Four minutes into the third. Mikhail Bonker. Missed on the short side. Phoenix clears. Alberts over to pick up the puck. Yannick Weber finds Ryan Kessler. Higgins picks up the loose puck and backhands into the Phoenix zone before heading to the bench. Ekman Larson. That one missed everybody, and it's icing as the puck winds up behind the Vancouver goal line. Hunter Shinkarek and Michael Stone. Michael Stone had five hits leading the group, and Shinkarek goes around, but he's got the hands right in his face. Stone doesn't get the call. Hornhammer just couldn't get that puck to settle down, and Yannick Hansen gets tripped up by Keith Yandel and doesn't get the call. Might have lost an edge there. Hendricks so over checking. Got the stone out. Anytime you go feet first into the boards, it can alter the blade just a bit. Jason Garrison pokes a puck to center. Morris collects. He's moved past the five minute mark of the third period. Garrison risks the puck back in, and Grice misses it behind that. Ekman Larson is there. The exit pressuring Korpakoski holds the puck in. Chance in front for And a rebound scored for Santorelli after Horvat was stopped. Mike Santorelli on the backhand gets his second of the preseason to make it 4-1. Uh, and again, the Canucks going hard to the net. Get a rebound. Thomas Grice would probably like to have this one back because it hit him in the midsection and he was unable to hang on. Horvat cuts to the middle, takes the shot, and Grice off the chest is unable to absorb the puck. Rebound goes out, and the backhand is by Thomas Grice. Shinkarik was creating a disturbance in front. Don't know if he poked it over, touched the puck before Santorelli got his stick on it. But at 5.22, Mike Santorelli makes it a three-goal Canuck lead. His strong showing continues. There's a deflected shot that bounced. And Luongo tracked that puck, took it off the chest, and he held on. Forwards always like that when all three members of the line are in on a goal. And uh, that's what that one's going to show. Mike Santorelli, who is uh, last week ended up playing defense as the Canucks ended up with only four defensemen and then due to penalties he ended up playing on the blue line. Played center in Edmonton and then lining up on the wing in this hockey game. Stock has to be going up with this preseason. Shinkarik and Horvath get the assists. And here's Hanson in on the right wing. Sedin and Henrik Sedin trying to come up with the puck. Henrik does. Pass for Daniel. Intercepted. Hansel feeds across to Yandel. Now up to center for Verbata. Henrik Sedin on the back check. Knocked the puck away from him. And Tanev gets it ahead to Hansen. Tried to go rink wide at center for Edler. That was intercepted. And the Coyotes retake control. Six and a half minutes gone in the third period. Here's Runeblad at the blue line. 
Bodker after the puck on the near side. And a whistle. The Canuck net had been dislodged. Mike Santorelli, the latest goal scorer, and the Canucks are up by three. Take the whole family to a game with Canucks Family Night Packs presented by QMFM and Cineplex. Save up to $20 off each ticket. Receive 10% off at the team store. And get a free Cineplex family fun back complete with four movie tickets plus popcorn and drinks at the theater. Visit Canucks.com slash Family Nights for more information. Oh, that tastes good. Extra butter. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you eat without extra butter? <laughs> I'm not a big popcorn fan because of the false teeth. You know that. I don't eat popcorn. Everything gets caught under these false teeth from my old goaltending days. So you make up for the <laughs> yes. butter part of it with other avenues. Yeah, it's not popcorn. Ryan Kessler read that play well, and he's out quickly through center. We're trying to get around Bodker. Now after the puck behind the net, Rundblad shoots into the corner, hit the referee. Higgins down for Kessler. In traffic, he finds Higgins in the corner. Chris Higgins round the net. Pass to Alex Burroughs. Bobbled the puck. And Vermet takes it away and skates it out to center. Antoine Vermet checked by Kevin Bieksa, who banks the puck up for Higgins. Michael Stone being pursued by Kessler. Hits him along the boards and Stone passes around for Oliver Ekman Larson. <laughs> Miele tips the puck in, goes after the corner. Alberts is on him. Puck comes free to Weber. Perfect pass and Santorelli's in over the Phoenix line. Finds Shinkarek, wrist shot. And handled by Grice. Now Shinkarik into it in the corner. And it's Stone, who might still be a little upset about that play in the neutral zone a couple shifts ago. Well, that's it. Yannick Weber has had a very good game, but I, I agree with you. That's a reaction from the Shinkarik hit on Stone earlier in this period. Look at Yannick Weber. Carry the puck out of his own and then make the good pass. Draw some people, create some open ice for Mike Santarelli, and uh, the chance by Shinkarik and Stone goes after Shinkarik. Mismatch in size. You talk about the Weber pass to Santarelli, that was the same combination to set up the opening goal in Edmonton. Just hit him at the perfect moment in the neutral zone so that Santarelli could move in with speed. Santorelli pressuring Yandel. Cowdy's get the puck out. Paul Horvat is at a strong game. Passes back to Alberts. And the puck is sent back into the Phoenix zone. Derek Morris, in the well, final year of his contract, threw that one to center. Too hot to handle. And an icing call will bring the faceoff back down the ice. John Tortorella has to be happy with the way his team has played. And this is more of his team. The first three games. Not really the lineup that you would consider even for exhibition games. This one's more like it. Especially the first period. I thought the Canucks played a very good hard four checking first period. Alex Edler's stick broke on that one time attempt. Patty O'Neill. Johnny on the spot had a new one ready for him within seconds and Edler's back into the play. Here's Richardson. Trying to sneak one in the side, Jim. Ice has the pad down, but it's in. And Richardson. Hearing about it from the Coyotes. Well, the referee's going to say the whistle blew. And he was pointing to the face-off dot. Yandel not done with Brad Richardson, who just wasn't going to quit on that puck, and the Coyotes didn't appreciate it. Tom Sestito being escorted to the penalty box. Now here's a look at it. Brad Richardson brings it out, tries to stuff it. Grice has the leg down, but it, it slides by relatively quickly. And there's Thomas Grice. 
Well, it's a little hard to tell. We could hear the whistle. I thought the referee was pointing to the faceoff dot in the corner, but now because of the penalty, it's going to come down deep into the Canuck zone. Tom Sestito is the only one sitting in the penalty box. Roughing call at 8.49. Coyotes, one for four on the power play, get their fifth opportunity. One time from the line, Luongo, good reaction to stop that shot from Runblad. That puck was moving, Runblad again. Here's Verbata. Max Domi in front for Verbata, that pass was disrupted by Ryan Kessler. Intercepting the puck is Alex Edler, and he finds a seam and gets it down the ice. Here's Oliver Ekman Larson. Hard pass to Hansel. Gives the puck to Domi. Tried to get it through to Hansel. The exit broke that up. For batter to the blue line, Ekman Larson to Runblad. Two Canucks on him as he moved down the boards. Here's Ekman Larson being watched by Henrik Sedin. And Daniel Sedin intercepts the pass across. Up the ice with Henrik. Daniel to Henrik, to the net, to Daniel. And the spin pass on the backhand was intercepted. Looked like the Coyotes were guessing pass all the way. <laughs> Henrik had a lane to the net. 30 seconds to go in the Phoenix power play. Just over nine and a half minutes remaining in the third period as Andrew Alberts intercepts the puck and gets it off the glass and down the ice. Michael Stone out with the puck. Antoine Grumet to the blue line. Stone near side. Yandel one-timer whistling wide. Brown was in front. Creating a disturbance for Luongo, now a chance for Vermet. Yandel again, fakes the shot, cuts left. Yandel still with the puck in front for Bodker. Intercepting was Richardson. Sestito's out of the box, he's after the puck at center, but the Coyotes get there first. Phoenix now one for five on the power play as Bo Horvat moves in on the right wing. Horvat center, Sestito to the net, scores! Tried to deke and the puck rolled in. He'll take it. It's 5-1. John, you talked about Bo Horvat having a good game, and he has had a very good game. He's got good puck sense. Look at this head-up play. Hard pass to Tom Sestito, who tried to drag it, and instead it just slid through Thomas Christ. Great pass by Bo Horvat. Tape to tape. And Sestito finishes off. Biggest lead of the night. It was already, and it continues to grow. A four-goal advantage for the Canucks with eight and a half minutes to go in the third. Derek Morris backhands the puck in. Tannen, bodied by Korpakoski. Korpakoski taken down. Four bad up in it, and play goes on. Tanev and Edler combined to check Korpakoski off the puck. Here's Horvath. Checked by Miele, but Tanev able to get the puck out. Here's Morris. Drop pass, but the Coyotes were offside, and the whistle blows. With just under eight minutes to go, third period. Bo Horvath, a couple of assists, the latest to Tom Sestito, and the Canucks are up by four. In this issue of Sportsnet Magazine, Sen star Bobby Ryan opened up, uh, opens up about his childhood being on the run from the FBI and how he survived it all. Subscribe now at sportsnet.ca slash magazine. Now uh, here's, look at Hunter Shidkarik going to the net. And that takes the defenseman, that leaves Tom Sestito wide open. And a beautiful pass by Bo Horvat. And Sestito gets a break because it's hooked off his stick and into the net.
Brendan Gauntz onto the ice and into the offensive zone, pressuring David Rundblad. Hansen trying to help out. She takes a turn here with Gauntz and Santarelli. Puck gets behind Kevin Bieksa, but he's able to turn and move it just out. And the whistle blows on the offside. He loves the show so much. John Garrett just yes, wants I me do. to repeat this. It is the hit show revolution. It's back on City. New day, new time, Wednesdays, 8 o'clock here in the Pacific Time Zone. Don't know how they're going to stop the bombs. The power's back on just for a couple of hours. They have to stop. Atlanta is one of the cities that is being bombed as we speak. Philadelphia is another one. Oh. I'll have to PVR that. You got a game? <laughs> you mean you're not going to tape it like Murph and I do? <laughs> Here's the chance in front. Get up the VHS machine. <laughs> oh, here's Max Domian on the right wing. Pass back. Gets by Yandel and the puck deflects down into the Phoenix zone. Seven minutes to go. It's how far the Canucks are from their first win, but a chance for Domi here on the stretch passing on goal. And Luongo held his ground and made the save. Santarelli sifting through center. To the backhand, trying to cut the net. That was knocked away by Stone. Verbata takes his pass and deflects the puck through. Luongo out of his net leaves for Yannick Weber. The birthday boy ahead to Mike Santarelli. And here's Andrew Alberts. That hit Vaughn Rohde, the linesman, forcing the play offside, and the whistle blows. Chris Tanev does a nice job. This long pass by Derek Morris to Max Domi, and Domi tries to cut to the net, and Tanev, two hands on the stick, doesn't take the penalty, and takes Domi down so that he can't pull it to the backhand and try and beat Roberto Luongo. Showing a replay up on the... Big screen. He looks pretty excited about it. He like that, yeah. Bo Horvat in. Pass for Shin Carrick, who takes the puck off the carry. Pass to the corner, taken away. And the puck thrown forward for Vermette. Antoine Vermette couldn't get the puck over the Vancouver blue line. Shin Carrick trying to poke it to the side. Now it comes to Vermette again. Santorelli trying to check him. Pass to Korpakoski, and reaching in was Andrew Alberts to steer that puck. Over the glass for a whistle. Fourth game of the preseason. Canucks closing in on their first win. They lead by four with six minutes to go. Come to an NHL camp. You played in the NHL. You signed a two-way contract. You, it's notice me. It's notice me. And Mike Santorelli in Edmonton, notice me. First couple of minutes of play. Takes that pass. Here tonight, go to the net, get a rebound on the backhand and put it away. And, and Mike Santorelli is making sure that people are noticing it. He served notice. Canucks back at it tomorrow. We'll be here on Sportsnet. Our coverage starts at 7 o'clock. Canucks and the Sharks for the second time this preseason. Sharks have whittled down their roster. And more like the Sharks. Here's Henrik Sedin. Steps out to the near side, carries him the blast, he scores. Put it on a tee for Garrison, and he made no mistake. And that's one of the things, and the shoot first attitude of the Canuck defenseman. If teams are going to collapse in front of the net and try and block shots, you better block it because if you don't, it's going to go in. And Henrik Sedin sets up Jason Garrison. The crowd's there, and Brown can't block it. He, that's what he's trying to do. Garrison gets it by him, and there's absolutely no chance for Thomas Grice from there. Sixth goal for the Canucks. And Garrison has his first. Six points from the back of the blue line in this hockey game. Henrik Steen, Yannick Hansen get the assists on the 6-1 goal. And now just over five minutes remaining in the hockey game. 
Gilbert Brule leaves the puck along the boards. And it's brought out by Andy Miele. Vodker from center sends the puck in, and Yannick Weber goes back for Vancouver. Chris Higgins checked at center. Here's Chip Churan on the right wing. Center pass for Moss was just out of his reach. Now Moss from a sharp angle along over the pad and the stick down holding the post. Moss again. Had to play the puck to the corner. Klinghammer gets it behind the goal. Tracks the puck down on the near side. Morris, left point, Yandel. Here's Tipchura. Tried to step through a couple of Canucks. Was checked. Kessler brings the puck to center. He's checked by Keith Yandel. And Tipchura flips it back in. But Yandel was in ahead of the puck. And the whistle blows for the offside. Connected coming up immediately following the game. All the news in the world of sports, plus Don and Gary talking about this game, I bet. Thanks so much. Just a reminder that uh, Gary Volk, James Cebulski, and myself will have a full post-game show after the Canucks and Coyotes back to Rogers Arena. Before that, just over four minutes of hockey to be played with the Canucks in a comfortable 6-1 lead. Hunter Shinkarek, body by Rudenblatt, but the puck gets through to Santorelli. Drop pass Horvat in front for the exit, but the pass was behind him. Horvat had the puck go over his stick behind the net. Coyote sent it up the middle, broken up by Santorelli. Shinkarek tried to set up Horvat, but the puck comes out to center. The exit flips it back in and heads to the bench. Three and a half minutes to go. Hansel after the puck at the Vancouver line, fights off the check of Corvette, cuts in on roll, the centering pass, and Edler got in the way of that puck intended for Radim Verbata. Shinkarik at the end of his shift gets the puck in deep and heads off. David Schlenko, pass to Fletch to Chris Brown. He couldn't get it by Henrik Sedin, up ahead for Daniel, tied up by Schlenko, and Daniel Sedin goes down. Here's Stone for Phoenix. Dumping the puck in. Tanev. Bodied along the boards. Brown trying to center. And that was Bly Tanev who took the hit earlier from Korpakowski. Comes up with the puck. Can't get it by Stone. Let's go with a long shot wide of the goal. Daniel Sedin ahead to Henrik Sedin. Tried to slide one through for Hansen. That's taken away and the puck is flipped out by Schlemko. Yannick Weber. Waiting for the Canucks to finish a change, moves in with a hard slap shot, and that whistled over top of the net. Vodker picks up that deflected puck, finds Brule, shot attempt, blocked by Andrew Alberts, and the puck is cleared out by Sestito. Yandel to Brule. A couple of moves inside his own blue line, checked by Gunks, and the Canucks have control of the puck again. With two minutes remaining in the hockey game, here's Richardson. And puck comes to Sestio, he tips it to the corner. Gets by Brule, here's Garrison to Sestito. And he backhands the puck in behind, Morris there to cut it off. Checked by Richardson, Sestito trying to poke the puck in deep. Now gets it again along the boards. And Brule able to intercept and get it by Garrison and out. Here's Jason Garrison in his own zone. Ahead for Ryan Kessler. Puck, puck deflects in to the Phoenix zone. Burrows pressuring Runeblad. Throws a hit in the corner. Centering pass for Higgins didn't get through. Chip Chur out with the puck. He finds Ekman Larson at center. In on the right wing. Tips the puck behind the goal. Edler there for Vancouver. The two number 23s battling for the puck. Ekman Larson able to poke it behind the net for Klinkham. Centering pass. Oh, what a stop by the Longo on Moss. And then he stopped the rebound as well. A couple late saves for Roberto Longo as we move into the final minute of the hockey game. 20 saves on 21 shots for the Vancouver Netman. Chipchura is slow to get up in the Vancouver zone as the Canucks move the puck out. And it's played in by Chris Higgins. Chichura took a punch at Alex Burrows at the Vancouver bench. 
And she was headed to the Phoenix pin. She reached right in and gave the Canuck a poke. Offside of the Canucks as Shinkarek moved in ahead of Mike Santarelli. Roberto Luongo, his second start of this preseason, much better in this one positionally, and some great saves. That's when the game was still close. It was 3-1 at that time when Roberto made those saves. And then Michael Bodker right at the start of the second period when Phoenix looked like they could come back. And then just to top it off on David Moss, point blank, stopped him twice. And they have added that second shot. So 21 saves on 22 shots for Luongo. 15 seconds to go in the game. And fans start to show their appreciation. Another shot wide. And it is preseason. At the end of the day, the results don't mean a whole lot, but John Tortorella has his first win as a Canuck coach as Vancouver knocks off Phoenix 6-1. And the Canucks, more like the Canuck team with the lineup they had in this one, set the tone early in the first period, had 17 shots on goal, played in the Coyote zone, and looked like they were starting to get that four-checking system that John Tortorella is trying to enforce. With the stronger lineup, their most complete effort of the preseason, and Roberto Luongo gets the win, stopping 21 shots. 6-1 the final, the Canucks over Phoenix. Here's Dan Murphy.